Hello students, uh, welcome to another session of Advanced FNB Operations. In this session, we are going to talk about the Kitchen Stewarding Department. Uh, this is the topic that uh, most of us have already discussed or learned in uh, first year. But then it was only about the few operations, uh, how a Kitchen Stewarding uh, uh, basic functionality is there, is what has been learned. Now this time uh, in fifth semester the same topic is uh, um, you know um, given in a, a little more depth and also understanding from managerial aspect. As we all know kitchen stewarding department plays a very very important role in uh, uh, smooth functioning of uh, FNB service and as well as the food production department. That is the reason it is uh, um, called as the backbone of uh, FNB department, backbone of FNB department. Most of the kitchen stewarding operations uh, are in a back area, though its uh, a role is uh, very much visible in uh, frontline operations. Now we will try to understand what are the various uh, um, functions that a kitchen stewarding does, what is the hierarchy or organizational chart that they have and uh, what are the various dishwashing methods uh, and how the stock is uh, managed. These are the points that we will understand by the end of this uh, chapter. Organization chart of a kitchen stewarding department. As you can see on the screen, the hierarchical chart or organization chart is not uh, very lengthy. It only has a uh, very few levels. The department is uh, headed by kitchen stewarding manager. The same designation is also termed as a chief kitchen steward or executive kitchen steward in a different organizations. The kitchen stewarding manager in most cases reports to executive chef. That is because most of the kitchen stewarding uh, uh, jobs are very much closely related or associated with kitchen activities, most of them. But in those organizations where we have a FNB director as a head of a, a total FNB areas that is both kitchen and service in those organizations kitchen student manager reports to FNB director but not to the executive chef so his direct reporting authority will be FNB director but in Indian hotels in most commonly we see that kitchen stewarding manager reporting to the executive chef. Now this kitchen stewarding manager is uh, subordinated by KST supervisors. They are also known as uh, shift supervisors uh, because they handle each one of them handles one particular shift. So they are called as a shift supervisors or kitchen stewarding supervisors. These supervisors are subordinated by front line or a baseline or operational uh, workforce uh, who are known as utility workers and also there is a category in that is a dishwasher now it's a dishwashers and utility workers are the one who will uh, report to the kst supervisor kitchen stewarding supervisor in this uh, the utility workers uh, main job or primary jobs are uh, keeping the areas clean and tidy both in a kitchen and a service or a general areas common areas they clean mop wash such things are done they keep all kitchen areas or work kitchen work areas uh, um, you know maintained or clean clean whereas the dishwasher dishwasher's uh, functions or his jobs are he is a trained person to operate dishwashing machines or that area according to the standards, the local standards, requirements 
of the that public health organizations of that country or the land in indian scenario you don't find uh, there is a separate designation as a dishwashers because in here the same utility workers work uh, in uh, all way uh, all kitchen stewarding areas in rotation that is uh, these people are rotated through dishwashing area uh, kitchen areas pot wash areas and uh, common areas there is no separate category or a designation as a dishwasher but then uh, i have shown this dishwasher as a separate uh, uh, designation in the screen uh, on uh, this thing screen because in most western countries or european countries uh, uh, dishwashers are a separate category of people who are qualified differently than utility workers these people need to be trained technically to operate dishwashing machines only then they are uh, uh, you know eligible to fill these positions so that is the reason the dishwashers are shown differently because in those countries dishwashers don't do the utility job and utility workers are not allowed to handle the dishwashing machines but otherwise both these designations will report to the kitchen stewarding supervisors next uh, we will talk about the basic tasks of kitchen stewarding department it enhances the efficiency of food and the beverage production that's your kitchen departments by doing what it increases or enhances the efficiency the tasks that are performed by kst in kitchen areas is uh, they provide clean sanitized cooking utensils to the kitchen team they keep all production areas clean and uh, grease free because a lot of work is done with the oil and uh, things and all they maintain all equipment like ovens ranges or potato peelers grinders all these um, equipments or machinery is maintained by kitchen stewarding department they keep the floors uh, clean and tidy these are the jobs that are done in relation to the production department or kitchen department the next point is enhances the efficiency of food and beverage service department how are they going to do this is that they keep all the back areas of uh, fnb departments that is your outlets are kept clean because they are functional areas they tend to get um, you know messy very often so they keep these areas clean and tidy they provide all the equipment that is necessary for fnb operations because they maintain the stock of all fnb equipment they issue the banquet equipment when there are um, banquet functions or events are happening and again once the event is over those things are again transferred to the kitchen stewarding stores they also help fnb service department by dishwashing that is all the crockery cutlery glassware these things are uh, cleaned wiped and sent back uh, to the restaurant for reset up or usage the next task is maintaining high standards of sanitization in those countries or uh, where public health uh, departments are very active and they have a very stringent rules their kitchen stewarding job is a very very vital and important because uh, these are the people who maintain the uh, you know the preparation areas uh, with uh, high standards of sanitization hygiene standards are followed 
Kitchens Delivery Department helps in cost control by scanning the um, garbage, checking that any food waste that is in excess of you know in excess any food waste is happened from any department and reports to the concerned authorities. Keeps leakages, pilferages, uh, you know, uh, uh, under control. By doing that, uh, they help in controlling the cost. They operate the uh, staff cafeteria, which is their um, prime, uh, fun, you know, areas. That uh, staff cafeteria is solely maintained, managed by. Um, uh, kitchen stewarding staff with the help of uh, one or two cooks uh, who actually prepare the food but the rest of the service maintenance of the place everything is done uh, by the kitchen stewarding department they ensure safe workplace by maintaining uh, the uh, safety standards like uh, checking on uh, fire blankets uh, fire extinguishers um, keeping the chemicals away from the work areas. So these are the um, you know, tasks that are done to ensure the areas are safe working places. They maintain records of inventory and not just inventory, a lot of other records are maintained by them like a breakage record, preventive maintenance record, accident and incident reports like inventories are maintained by them so all these uh, records are maintained by the kitchen stewarding department next we will talk about uh, dishwashing uh, methods to know that first we will talk uh, in general what are the steps in a dishwashing procedure the first step is buzzing. Buzzing is what usually done by the uh, uh, service staff in most uh, hotels. As soon as you take the clearance into the um, dishwashing area, you need to um, um, throw all the leftovers, debris that is there on the plate. Okay, all those things are thrown into the garbage bins. Okay? That is called a buzzing. Then the pre-soaking, pre-soaking is that if the um, cutlery, crockery are usually pre-soaked so that uh, it becomes easy later on to clean them and also if they are from the banquets and all usually the plates come in um, you know um, stacks which are uh, stacked for some time and they come in by the time some food items get dried off onto that. So these things need to be pre-soaked so that the cleaning happens effectively later on. The third point is spraying. After pre-soaking, the uh, utensils or equipment are sprayed and uh, to dislodge all the material that is stuck onto the plates and they are washed in a detergent uh, solution. Then they are rinsed with clean water and then sanitized. Sanitization usually happens uh, in two ways. One is making, uh, uh, you know, subjecting them to high temperatures, that is washing in uh, uh, very, very hot water, which kills all the germs and bacteria and it gets sanitized. Second method is that uh, putting them in uh, uh, sanitizing solutions like a chlorine solution, which also kills all the microorganisms and they get sanitized. Then they are dried. Drying is uh, in um, um, traditionally or in uh, Indian hotels, we still see that people um, wipe the uh, cutlery crockery or a glassware after washing so that there are no watermarks on it. But in most organizations now, not just in uh, European countries but also in India nowadays, they realize that uh, wiping with the cloth or linen uh, will actually leave lint uh, onto the lint onto the surfaces and also it is not a very hygiene practi hygienic practice. So they avoid wiping them but uh, instead they subject or put the cutlery 
under a hot air blower so that all the water gets a, um, a, you know blown away and then they come out clean and dry then they are stacked properly and stored in their respective places this is what the dishwashing departments or a procedure actually happens in these steps now we will talk about dishwashing methods there are uh, two different types of dishwashing methods first one is a manual dishwashing method and the second one is a mechanical dishwashing as the name suggests manual dishwashing is, um, is done by the human beings without um, any um, you know machine operations and a mechanical dishwashing is uh, done uh, with the help of a machines so, now these are uh, um, manual or mechanical dishwashing methods are again uh, uh, sub categorized the manual dishwashing method has uh, two methods again that is a uh, two sink method and three sink method again as the name says two sink method uses uh, two sinks uh, to separate sinks uh, in the wash procedure and three sink method uses three separate sinks in the wash procedure now we will see how these procedures occur very briefly as you see on the screen the two sink method has got two sinks that are filled with uh, one is filled with a detergent solution at a uh, 45 degrees centigrade so the solution that you have uh, is a uh, uh, hot detergent solution to wash the equipment so after spraying the dishes come onto this uh, sink uh, which has got a detergent solution somebody puts it in and rubs or uh, you know brushes them off so that all the grease uh, from the food and everything uh, dislodges from the plates and these uh, plates from the first sink uh, are transferred to the second sink where you have a uh, hot water which is maintained at a 77 degrees centigrade at least minimum that's a really hot water this temperature is maintained so that uh, there are if there are any bacteria or germs on it they get sanitized by dipping in a such hot water so the second sink is basically used for rinsing of the uh, you know cutlery or crockery and then also for sanitizing at the same time however this method is uh, uh, effective only for a smaller organizations where there is not a lot of turnover this uh, two sink method may not be very effective in a large organization where there is a lot of turnover because uh, uh, repeatedly using these two sinks uh, uh, with for a you know washing a many equipment uh, it quickly spoils the water in the sinks and then the wash quality drastically comes down in those cases uh, it is advised to use three sink method where if you see on the screen there are three different sinks here the first one has a warm or hot detergent solution at 45 degrees centigrade second one has got just a hot water at 45 degrees which is used for rinsing of the soap from the equipment the first one to wash with the detergent second sink is to rinse off that soap from the equipment and a third one has got a hot sanitizing solution it can be at 77 degrees or there can be any chemical that is like a chlorine is can be added into it to sanitize so after rinsing the clean ones are dipped into the sanitizing so that the chances or a probability of uh, the water getting contaminated is uh, much lower when compared to the two sink method this works much effectively even for uh, bulk or uh, you know busy uh, you know turnover places also but ultimately any of these methods has got their own limitations they only 
uh, are effective for limited uh, uh, cycles that is uh, for some time how many equipment that you dip in it until uh, the water temperature is maintained in it at that levels is only it will be effective so these are the two different methods manual methods used for dishwashing now let's talk about uh, mechanical dishwashing and in that uh, what are the types of dishwashers that we have there is a door type dishwashing or dishwasher it's a machine that is a door type dishwasher and the second one is a conveyor type where you have a continuously uh, revolving belt or uh, a rotatory belt basically conveyor that's why it is called a conveyor type it is also known as a flight type con a flight type dishwasher let's understand these things a little bit more now as you see here this is a door type dishwasher such things are usually seen in um, uh, home in homes for uh, you know smaller quantities of dishes to wash but there are also commercial quality door type dishwashers which can be used for uh, you know longer periods of time but the disadvantage of this machine is that uh, here the dishes can be washed batch after batch it can be only washed in batches not continuously you load one set of a crockery in the machine close it it's just like your uh, clothes washing machine that once you load and put the clothes in it and uh, switch it on it takes some time to wash them off and then uh, to open it similarly even this washer takes a uh, some time to wash and uh, you know sanitize the equipment and then it opens up you take it out and put uh, load another batch into it so you have to clean the equipment uh, batch after batch batch after batch it's a little time consuming again in uh, um, you know for uh, not a very busy operations or outlets you can uh, very well use uh, this door type machines they are absolutely fine now. the wash quality is not bad at all but it's just that uh, it the wash cycle timings you have to wait and then uh, load it again the second one is a conveyor type dishwasher where you see it is a, a very big machine uh, it has a big tunnel from one side the um, dirty ones are loaded into the uh, machine and uh, from the other side uh, the clean and uh, uh, you know hygienic sanitized uh, equipment comes out this is a continuously running machine um, this can um, uh, be very very useful for large operations where there are too many outlets and too many equipment to be washed a large banqueting facility in those places uh, conveyor type dishwasher is uh, a perfect uh, dishwashing machine to be used but it has its uh, few limitations or disadvantages to you know talk about the machine cannot be instantly operated it takes uh, a half an hour to 45 minutes initially to get it started once you switch it on in this time the it has a you know water tanks that are filled and then it heats the water to a required temperature so the, all this process takes this initial half an hour to 45 minutes only then machine will be ready to operate in a door type dishwasher the uh, once you load the dishes into the it the all the cycles the various uh, you know stages in the cycle will happen one after another and uh, dishes are clean in a conveyor type various stages of dishwashing or wash cycle continuously happens all the time dishes pass through each stage in the cycle and comes out to the other side 
this tunnel has got a various uh, compartments that are in, that have got individual tanks now usually how uh, the dirty ones when they are loaded in the first compartment uh, they are sprayed or you know with the water to rinse off the, all the you know uh, derbies that are there on the plate then they enter into the next chamber or uh, you know compartment where you have a hot water spraying with a detergent solution so that all the grease is uh, removed from the equipment and then they go into the third compartment where just plain hot water it cleans off then the fourth compartment where it sanitizes and the fifth compartment uh, it blows with the hot air so that you get a clean no water marks and sanitized equipment to the other side usually this is how the functionality it takes a lot of uh, you know power uh, uh, you know but uh, consumption is high for this machine because it continuously runs you can't uh, give pauses in between uh, but it has uh, it is worth buying uh, if you have a busy operations uh, than having a door type dishwasher there are various dishwashing technologies are used in uh, various dishwashing machines uh, in a mechanical dishwashing only there are various technologies that are used now we will talk about those first one is a spray type spray type dishwashing machines as the name suggests in this uh, high pressure water uh, uh, jets uh, spray water onto the dishes so that uh, the uh, you know all the dirt or soil uh, you know is removed from that and grease is dislodged and washed so the technology used in this to wash or clean the dishes is spraying water with high pressure the next type is a brush type in these machines you have a revolving brushes they you know uh, you know keep rotating around or on the equipment so that they are um, um, scrubbed basically the what uh, the hand manually how we clean the dishes it is done in the machine with the help of a re revolving brushes they are scrubbed and rubbed and, and then things are cleaned from the equipment this is a brush type then the next type is a agitator type it's a water agitator water agitator type is in which there are um, water tanks in which the equipment is uh, submerged and then a water in the tank is uh, moved rapidly uh, you know from different directions to you know in various directions or a whirlpool is made into that so that water moves very you know uh, fast uh, through the equipment and it rinses off or cleans off the equipment this is called agitator water agitator type dishwashing take there are the three are the three major technologies that are seen in a dishwashing machines in that the spray type ones are very popular and most commonly used now we will talk about uh, the elements that affect the quality of uh, uh, wash wash quality that uh, efficiency of a dishwashing machine depends on these elements first one is a uh, time or wash cycle or the period that uh, equipment spends in a uh, uh, dishwashing machine it is directly related to the wash quality the wash cycle is uh, too short then the the dishes uh, spend a little very little time in the machine to get uh, completely cleaned the efficiency will be lost the, so it is always advised to set that wash cycle uh, to an uh, optimal uh, time frame so that uh, the wash quality is maintained to the standards the second element is uh, temperature another very important element because uh, temperature is all what is all uh, um, determines the wash quality because uh, uh, and what temperature the water is 
or a detergent or, or a water, a rinse water, all these things are there. The fat or grease from the plates is uh, uh, dislodged or removed or just because of uh, this uh, hot uh, temperature that is maintained. And also, at what temperature they come out of the machine uh, or determines the sanitization levels or hygiene levels of your dishwashing. So, a different manage machines can uh, are, hap are capable of maintaining different temperatures. So, need to choose a machine that suits to your organization and which also is according to the local public health laws. The next element is the pressure. It is what is the capacity of a compressor that is there in the uh, machine and with what pressure it can uh, pump the water or, or, or spray the water on the dishes. Uh, the, the obviously, the wash quality directly again affected by this, uh, the pressure in which water is pumped or sprayed onto the dishes. Next, detergent that is used. There are various different types of chemicals that are uh, um, in use or in the market to use for the um, dishwashing machines. So please choose what is suitable for your machine because uh, every machine's requirement uh, for a detergent solution is different. So find out, read through the manual, buy the right ones, not the cheap ones so that uh, you don't compromise on the wash quality of your equipment. Then the rinse additives used. A rinse additive is a kind of a uh, solution that is usually added in the last cycle, uh, uh, last stage in the wash cycle basically. This helps in uh, creating a coat or coating over the you know equipment uh, so that there is no water that is, uh, you know, water droplets, don't stay on it, there won't be any water marks, it easily gets uh, um, dried off. The rinse additive is a basically a kind of solution that helps in keeping the equipment watermark free. Okay? It creates a coat on top of the, uh, you know, equipment. These are the five different elements that are usually a, a affect uh, uh, dishwashing machines and its efficiency. We will talk about another important task that is done by the kitchen stewarding which is the inventory and inventory control of F and B areas. Usually when we talk about uh, inventory, we uh, talk about crockery, cutlery, glassware and all. The crockery, cutlery are more prone to breakages. So, there is a high probability that uh, they break and then uh, you need to replace it. Unlike them, the cutlery do not break uh, easily. They are not uh, um, easily breakable ones, though they can be bent purposely if somebody tries it. But they go missing. The problem with the cutlery is go missing. The missing stock is uh, one of the biggest challenge that uh, all F&B outlets face. The kitchen stewarding uses various methods uh, or they have different procedures to, to check this uh, missing stock. Kitchen stewarding uh, takes rounds and uh, you know um, around various departments and outlets. They check the inventory of all the outlets and uh, then they segregate and any missing or not in place equipment is transferred back or shifted back to its original place. By accidentally or purposely, many a times we find cutlery landing up in a garbage. So, kitchen stewarding segregates, separates, sorts the garbages when they feel that the inventory is going very low or things are missing. So, they will do this 
and also in some organizations uh, the garbage areas are um, fixed with uh, metal detectors or scanners if a garbage bin, uh, you know, uh, you know, bag is uh, put into that uh, you know garbage area while going it the metal detector detects if there is any cutlery in it or any metal item is basically in it and uh, it gives alarm and then they can sort out rather than opening all the bags and uh, sorting out in smaller organizations it's usually done that they sort out all the cutlery uh, all the bags and the se separate things and see if there is anything that is useful gone into the garbage uh, you know uh, addition to this one kitchen stewarding is also res responsible for taking inventory of uh, both in a kitchen and a service areas uh, all the equipment it is done in a pre periodical uh, manner usually every six months once they take a physical stock from each department outlet that is from all kitchen areas and all f and b areas they make a record on of all these things see there are any missing or lost items in it they also ensure that they are replaced so that there are there is no uh, a compromise on the standards there is no difficulty in uh, operations so they replace the stock that is a uh, missing or lost because of the breakages the inventory is maintained the records are maintained they are submitted to the higher ups and a, 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 the uh, you know periodical purchases are made so that the stock is uh, re replenished or re refilled back into the hotels they also maintain the power levels of the equipment the power level is a, what is the power level power level is a, a number that is a multiple of a standard quantity of a particular inventory item to support daily operations usually the um, you know the number of uh, any one item that is required to set all the covers for a smooth functionality is known as a one par kitchen stewarding maintains the f and b equipment in uh, five par levels that is um, three par levels are issued to the department uh, that is uh, f and b outlet and two stocks two levels of stock is uh, um, you know maintained at a kitchen stewarding store so that it can be replenished as and when uh, the outlet stock goes down all the cutlery crockery glassware is maintained at a five par levels similarly kitchen stewarding also takes account of all kitchen equipment and the utensils that are maintained there and they make a you know uh, periodical purchases for the lost or broken things with this we have done uh, the kitchen stewarding uh, department functionality job their uh, job profiles organizational chart dishwashing methods and uh, thing elements that affect the dishwash quality with this chapter is also concluded thank you very much